Welcome to Virtual Reality and 360 Imaging. Mobilize your classroom and explore the world. On behalf of ourselves and the Southern Conference of Language Teaching, we hope that you are enjoying the NFLC Virtual Summit. My name is Chrissy Rowe. And I'm Hannah Ray Joseph. And we are excited to have this opportunity to participate in such a unique learning opportunity for language teachers. Today's presentation will look a little different than it has when we've presented at conferences in the past. The original presentation would have involved handing each of you a virtual reality headset and leading you all on a VR travel experience. As we know, things have changed drastically. We are no longer able to pass out and share headsets. In fact, we aren't even allowed to physically gather with each other, and many of us don't know whether or not we will gather with our students in the fall. For this reason, we have done what every one of you are doing right now. We have adapted. We will take a look at VR technology, but we're also going to explore 360 imaging, a simple tool that can help you take your static photo-based assignments and convert them into an activity that is engaging for students, both at home and in the classroom. Let's start by looking at a basic writing assignment. At some point, all of us have asked our students to look at a photo and describe what they are seeing or what they saw. We adjust our writing assignments based on language level and cultural topics. When looking at an image-based writing assignment, we can cover a variety of tasks and skills, just a few of which include the three Ps, descriptions, current vocabulary, cultural comparisons. The problem though is that this image is static. It requires absolutely no participation and no interaction. This is especially boring when assigning work to be completed at home. This is where 360 imaging comes into play. Let's say we want to ask our students to compare the holiday tradition seen here in Mauricio, Spain during the Three Kings celebration, and then compare them to the holidays and traditions that take place within their own culture. This is a simple, yet boring task with this image because we are, have a very limited view. Here is a look at the same scene, but from a 360 perspective. We're standing at the base of that same lighted tree, but this time, students can look around. They can explore everything that is around them. And in the case of videos, they can hear what's going on as well. As you can see, this is a much more interactive and engaging experience. A 360 image can be explored on any laptop or phone. If your students have a VR headset at home, then there is a way for them to use the same image with their headsets. We'll explore that option a little bit later on in the presentation. With this particular scene, we actually have another option to move to another spot directly underneath the tree. So if I look up, you can see exactly where it is that we're standing. When you scroll down and start to look around, you're going to see things and the students will see things that are somewhat familiar to what they see during this celebration time within their own culture but there are definitely some differences. And it's those differences that pique curiosity and start discussion within the classroom. It's what makes the students want to dig more and more into the image to see if they can figure out what is really going on and why do things look kind of familiar, but also different. Another thing that my students have found kind of intriguing is they see real life. You notice the girl on her cell phone? So many of my students noticed that, and in the other image as well. And they commented, they're on their phones, just like I would be if I was out with my family at, a, at something like this. It's interesting to see how the students actually connect when they can see what's going on, not just in front of them, but around them as well. When students explore 360 images, there's so much that we can write about and discuss. There's so many types of assignments that you can use with these images. Here is one example that I use with the image that we just explored. In step one, students would search for products, practices, and perspectives represented within the image. Search is the key word here. If possible, it's fun to let students work together so that you can hear them discuss the different things that they find. In step two, they create a list of similarities and differences to their own culture. There's nothing new here just a regular Venn diagram, but the fact that students are searching through the image makes it more of a scavenger hunt as they look for things that they can use to compare and contrast with. Finally, in step three, they create a short writing sample with the information that they have gathered. This is a great way to get your students writing. Another easy assignment is to have students keep a travel log. 
They can explore an image at the start of each class and then write freely about what they saw. Here is an example of something that a level one student wrote after visiting a cartoneria and cemetery in Mexico City during Day of the Dead. Exploring new places is a fun way to get your students writing. The writing doesn't have to be perfect, but writing should be fun. And this is something that requires very little setup for us, so it can easily be done as a bell ringer or an end of class assignment. Hopefully you can see that the 360 images are an easy way to spice up the activities that you are currently doing in class. So where do we go to find these resources? Let's explore one of the easiest places to locate 360 images as well as videos, YouTube. This time we'd like for you to join us in the exploration. So if you will, check out the resources with us so that you'll see how easy it is for your students to access images and videos this way. Using a laptop or computer, go to youtube.com and search for Travel Cuba in 360 Degrees VR, Episode 2, Havana. If you notice, there's going to be a ton of 360 options. We're just going to use this one to keep us all on the same page. If you were working with your students, you would simply send them the link via Google Classroom, via email, whatever your method is of communicating with your students in the classroom or at home. They would simply click to access the correct video. All right, once your video loads, then you'll want to hit play. If you're using a phone, please use the YouTube app instead of the actual browser. Now, one thing you'll notice about this clip is it's an actual video and not just a photo. So it's actually narrated and there's some inter interesting commentary throughout this video clip. But, and I'll mute it for just a second so that we can continue with the presentation. As you're watching, remember to move the image around, move the image up, move the image down. Oh, there we are. Did you realize we were riding in a car? There is our ocean. So if you don't have a touch screen, just use the mouse. And you can do this by left clicking and then moving your mouse. Basically, you're going to grab the screen and move it in the direction that you want it to go. Down, up, all the way around, just like that. Let's take a short break for you to explore the video on your own. If you find that you want more time to explore, please pause the presentation and continue your tour. To search for other videos on YouTube, make sure that you use the term 360 in your search. You'd be surprised how many videos are already out there for every culture, language, country that you could possibly imagine. So for example, let's try Paris 360. If you notice, we have quite a few to choose from. This is one of my favorites right here, the Sainte Chapelle in 360. We use it, um, I know I teach Spanish, but we actually use this one a little bit when we teach the book, um, Agentes Secretos y Amoral de Picasso, because one of the scenes in the book does take place in this chapel. And it's really neat to give the students an opportunity to view what's going on within the chapel. There we go. Feel free to play around and see what all is available. If students have their own VR headset at home, then they should use the YouTube app. In the bottom right hand corner, there's a little mask symbol that will change the view from a mono vision screen to the split vision screen that is needed for the VR headset. Simply insert their phone into the headset, making sure to line up the lines in the center, and then you're good to go. YouTube is a great place to go to find a variety of videos representing almost any cultural topic and country but it's not our only resource. Hannah is gonna take a few minutes to explain to us how to use Poly Poly tools. is a great way to take our 360 imaging explorations to another level. And also it'll be a great gateway to a group-wide virtual reality experience that we'll explore a little later on using Google Expeditions. 
Think of PolyTours as your bridge connecting the physical classroom with a potentially remote classroom. First of all, Poly is simply Google's way of bringing a 3D environment online. This is the same site where we viewed the Three Kings Day celebration in Spain earlier on. When you first enter the Poly site, you'll see the option for 3D images, paintings, augmented reality, also called AR, even architectural designs and 3D designs of animals. We're going to focus in on Poly Tours. Since this is a part of Google, if you're already logged into your Google account, you won't need to log in again. And the great thing is you have unlimited storage and creation on this site, which means if you're brave enough, you can create your own 360 tours. When you're logged in to your account, you'll simply click on the three bars on the left-hand side to open up a sidebar and then select tours. Here you'll find all the tours already created for public use. Some are more in-depth than others, providing more key details, photos, or information about the topic of interest that you're studying. So be sure to explore and find the one that best fits with your goals, themes, or standards. Sometimes you'll even find tours with audio files embedded into them. So let's try this first together. At the top of your screen, open up a new tab and search poly.google.com. If you're already logged into your Google account, you're good to go. Otherwise, you might need to pause here and continue to log in. Again, on the left-hand side, click the three lines to open up a sidebar and then select Tours. At the top, you'll see a search for things box. Here's where you can search any topic of interest that you might wanna include in your classroom. Today, we're gonna to search an abbreviated Tour of Cuba. There will be one option that pops up. Go ahead and click that option. Instead of using a static picture of El Castillo de la Fuerza Real, why not use a 360 image? Your screen will automatically start scrolling, but you can also control it by dragging and dropping. Remember to look up and down and all around. You'll notice as you look around that there are spots where you can click. This is what makes Polly different than YouTube and ideal for the classroom with almost no prep time on the teacher. When clicking on a stop on a tour, you'll see a picture and or be able to read more information about this feature. A really neat new addition to the site is that once you click on an info icon, it marks it with a check mark as visited, so you can keep track of all the stops at this location. Another neat thing about Polly is that you're not limited to only one scene or location. Once you're done at this stop of the tour, click the arrow to head over to our second stop and explore La Posa del Venado. Try exploring this next location on your own. We'll take a short break for you to explore. Remember to look up and down and all around and click on all of those info icons. If you find you want more time to explore, please pause this presentation and continue your tour. Under the 360 image, you'll notice that there's a share button. If we return to a remote or hybrid environment, or if you have a student who's simply absent from school, you can simply click the share button and send this link to your student to assign it to them. Poly is becoming more and more popular in education. 360 images are now readily available online and you can also assign your students to build their own 360 images and tours with just a few clicks. Instead of students sitting through slide presentations from their classmates, allow them to travel becoming the tour guides and exploring the world, even if it is from the safety of their own home. Poly Tours is a great place to go to find images that represent a variety of countries and cultures. They're fun to use at home and in the classroom. When you're using Poly Tours, you need to be on a computer or possibly a cell phone. 
We can't connect a VR headset directly to the Poly Tours website. If you'd like to take one of the Poly Tours and send it to a VR headset, then we'll need to use the Google Expedition app. Let's say that we end up being able to go to the classroom with all of our students in the fall, something that we're all hoping for. Our students really enjoy using the 360 images much more than the static photos, but they absolutely love it when we move these same images to the Google Expeditions app. While the assignment doesn't change, the experience is one that they will never forget because with the Google Expeditions app, we can all take the same tour together. And if we have the headsets, then we're able to all use the headsets together to take a group tour. Looking at your Poly screen, do you see the heart button next to the share button at the bottom? If you are signed into your Google account and you click the heart button, this will automatically send the 360 tour to the Google Expedition app. Go on and press that heart button now. Using the app, we'll be able to run the exact same tour in the classroom while you as the teacher get to act as the tour guide for all of your students at one time. Instead of the students clicking on the info icons themselves doing individual tours, you can control these buttons directing all of your students to the same spot at one time while you act as their guide, providing the descriptions that you provide or the ones that are already prepared for you within the app. Let's take a moment now and download the Google Expeditions app. We would like for you to participate with us throughout the next component of this virtual reality instruction. Go on and download the app on your phone now. Hannah is now going to walk us through the app and how you can use it in your classroom to direct tours or to let students tour individually. As this is downloading, Let's talk about the basic functions of Google Expeditions. When you open the app, you first want to click on the left-hand side to ensure that you're logged into your account, the same one you used on the Poly site. First, we're going to head over to our library, which will automatically take you to your downloads, but we want the My Tours tab. If you hearted the Cuba Tour, this is already visible in your library and it only requires downloading to your phone in order to be able to view it. Once it is finished downloading, you'll be able to view it yourself or guide it. As a teacher, you usually want to guide the tour. Once you're in, you'll see the name you are guiding under in a code. The students will not need this to enter the tour, but it can be useful in differentiating classes if there happen to be multiple teachers on the same Wi-Fi guiding a tour. Now you can see there's another device visible. This is the student device. Students will open the app and then click class at the bottom. You can see the same tour being guided on the teacher device is visible on the student device. They simply have to click join to join in. On the teacher's screen, watch the number of participants carefully. As the student gets in, you'll see the number change from zero to one. Now the students will see a message telling them to rotate their device sideways. Once rotated, they are in 360 view. As always, this can be changed back to monovision for students who prefer that option. On the teacher's screen, I'm going to click on Cannons of the Castle and direct my students' attention to this first stop in the location. Notice that an arrow instantly popped up in the student screen, directing them to turn their heads and device in that direction. Once the students follow and find the location, the picture will pop up and they can view as you read the pre-written description. After that description, I can move on to the next destination. Watch the left-hand teacher device screen. Do you see the little smiley face come into the picture? You'll see one of these for each of your students. And if a student starts getting distracted, which we know never happens in the classroom, it's really easy to see that the student has left the image and is wandering around Cuba on their own and that you need to redirect them back to the tour. So let's say you've been to the location you're showing and you have additional information you'd like to share that's not in the pre-written descriptions. You can simply press and hold anywhere on the screen until a small circle appears and direct your students to view that spot. When you're done at this location, swipe right and then click play to continue with the next screen. You don't have to view every location in Expedition, and you can mix and match as desired. Take a moment to view this next stop as I click on some of the options on the teacher end and while the student looks around. Notice here, as the student's eyes drift away a bit, they automatically receive an arrow prompting them to look back up. 
You always have access to a pause button. This will cause the screen to go blank if you would like to have a short class discussion or take time for students to fill in their travel logs without distraction. When you're ready to go ahead, you simply click the play button again. Now that your app has fully downloaded, you're going to have a firsthand experience of how to participate in a self-guided tour at home, something your students might need to be able to do. Keep in mind there are more tours on Poly than there are in Google Expeditions. This is because Google Expedition tours have all been formally vetted, with each including detailed discussion questions and thorough descriptions for immediate use in the classroom. When you open the app, you'll see the options at the bottom to discover in the app, or you can head to your library where you have your downloaded tours, or you can head to that My Tours tab where you have your liked or hearted tours from Polly, or you can go to the class where you either will explore or you guide. Since you've already seen how to guide a class and access your liked tours, let's try a self-guided tour. At the top in the search bar, search Underwater Galapagos. Choose the first option with that same title, and then download the tour to view. Once it's loaded, you'll see three options pop up, the view, view in VR, or guide. We already know how to guide a tour, so this time we're gonna view in VR. Go ahead and press that middle button. You'll be prompted to rotate your device, and it may take a second for this next screen to load. As always, you still have the option to view this in VR or to view it in Monovision. I am gonna change mine to Monovision so you're able to see and read some of these words. Students on the self-guided tour will see a little introduction paragraph and then they have the option to click along to different spots in this tour. They can click or they can press the arrows to move to the next destination. Another neat feature in the self-guided tour option is the ability to turn on the audio. Students have the option to select that each of these paragraphs be read to them, whether these be in English or another language. This is particularly great for teachers of young students or those who might have students with exceptional needs. Let's listen. This expedition will take you on a journey underwater to one of the most fascinating places on Earth, the Galapagos Islands. We realize that everyone doesn't have access to virtual reality headsets in the classroom or at home. But for those of you that do, it can add so much fun to your learning experience. Here's a few tips to make that experience a little easier for us as teachers. First of all, realize that headsets don't have to be expensive. You can purchase them for as little as $10 online. Don't forget though, to purchase some type of sanitizer if you plan on sharing those headsets. They will need to be thoroughly cleaned between students. We suggest that you limit your exploration time, time within the headset, to less than 10 minutes at once. If we plan on using them quite a bit, we'll explore one scene and then have the students put the headsets down so that we can discuss as a class or write about what we saw. And then we'll pick the headsets back up once we've given our eyes a, a chance to rest. One thing about the headset, if the images seem to be a little bit blurry, then look to make sure that the phone is lined up correctly within the headset. If you notice when we were looking at the headset view earlier, there was the split double image like this with a line running down the middle. That line needs to line up perfectly with the line markings within the virtual reality headset. This will make sure that your images are in focus and not blurry. Please avoid virtual reality if you're prone to headaches or seizures. For our students with these medical conditions, we always make sure that they have access to the same image via the Poly website or through the YouTube website. This allows them to participate on their Chromebook and still participate in classroom discussion. Be sure to stick to reliable resources. There are a lot of VR apps available online, but a lot of them require that the users be at least 18 years old. So please make sure that you know what the resources are that you're using before you try to introduce them. And then finally, when using apps like Expedition and YouTube, make sure that you close them out when not in use. They both rely on gyroscopes. So if you don't close them out, your phone is gonna be continuously looking and moving around at that image, even when you're not in the headset. So make sure to save your battery by closing out the apps once you finish each exploration. We're excited that you chose to join us today as we've traveled around the world. We hope that you've found the resources we've shared useful and we're happy to support you as you continue to go on journeys of your own. 
On behalf of SCULT, the Southern Conference on Language Teaching, we invite you to join us next year in Atlanta, Georgia, March 18th through the 20th, for the Language Through an Unfiltered Lens Conference. Thank you for joining us today as we've explored the world of 360 imaging as well as VR technology. We hope that you found something that you'll be able to use with your classrooms, both in the virtual classroom as well as when the regular classroom when students return in the fall. After exploring via YouTube, Poly, or Google Expeditions, remember to have your students write or discuss orally what they saw. This is a great opportunity to add a little bit of extra fun to those regular writing and speaking assignments that we do in class every single day. Thank you for joining us on this adventure.